Welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about Process OPC UA Simulation Server. Sometime you might come across a situation when you don't have a real hardware and you want to test the OPC UA model in your dashboard or in your analytics or anywhere where you want to see the values. So what you can do in this case, you can use a software which can simulate your OPC UA models. And it also comes with several features which are very useful to test your OPC UA clients. To understand that more, let's see what do we have in this video. We talk about Process OPC UA Simulation Server, which is used to test your OPC UA client connection and information models. What does this mean if this is all new to you? Let's understand that in detail. So in the first part of video, we'll see about the top features of the software, and then I'm gonna show you some examples. So the top feature is you can simulate your data. So it has some predefined simulated events inside. For example, you can have some waveforms, you can have some counter, some Boolean value, which is inside the OPC UA server, and you can directly access that in your client, and you can do some analytics if you like. And second amazing feature is if you have your own OPC UA model, you can also import that in the software and it has a very nice user interface which can help you to achieve that in a fraction of seconds. And last but not the least, it supports all OPC UA security policies. So let's quickly jump into some use case scenario. So first we will understand how the software can give you simulated data, which you can use in your OPC UA client. So in this example, I'm going to use Process OPC UA Simulation Server for the simulation data. And I'm going to use Process OPC UA Monitor, which is also a software from the same company. It's an OPC UA client where you can monitor your data. So let's first open Process OPC UA Simulation Server. And this one is here. You can install the software from their website and you can have a free evaluated version, which you can download and install and you can try out how the software works. So once you start the software, you will see this window here. So in this window, if you go to the objects, you will find the simulation folder already inside. So this, this comes along with the software. In the simulation folder, you have several variables. So first one is the counter. In this counter variable, you will see some parameters on my right side. So you can change the parameter, for example, the value type, it's counter, so which is already defined here. Data type, you can define which data type you want to use for the counter. Normally, if it's a digital counter, I can use int32. And then I have minimum and maximum value. I can change the maximum value according to my need. So now our maximum value is 10 and increment is one. I can also change the increment to two and then it will increment from, you can see the value here, it's zero, two, four, eight, six, eight, and 10, and then it will reset and comes back to zero. So you can define this time here in the interval. You can define how quickly you want to change the values. Now it's 100 millisecond, and let's say maximum count of 100. And here you have a direction. You can change the direction to up, or you can make it to down, or you can make it up and down. So these are several simulated variables you can have in the software which you can directly use in your OPC UA client or other applications. And then you have, for example, random, which is from plus two to minus two range, and it will randomly assign a value. And definitely this is in a float. And let's change the interval to, let's say, 500 milliseconds. So that's your random variable. And then you have a sorted waveform, you have sinusoidal waveform, square waveform, and you have triangle waveform. So these are some predefined variables, but interesting thing is you can also add your own variables. How you can do that? Just right click and add variable. And let's name this variable test variable. And it has its node ID predefined and its namespace is coming from OPC UA simulation nodes. Node type is numeric and its type is base data variable type by default and you click OK. And now you have your test variable here. One option is that it can inherit its um, values from base data variable type, or you can define the value yourself. So in this case, let's say if I say it's constant, I can define the value 45 and press enter. Now this value is 45 in this variable. And if I say I want to have the value as Boolean, I can also define the value true or false. If I say I want to use it as a counter, my own variable, so here in the case of counter, I will take int32, Minimum and maximum, let's say 100, an increment of one, direction is up, that's okay. So I have my own variable defined in this OPC UA server. So you can have as much variables you want. Now the question is how we can visualize this data. 
Second part is to visualize the data in Process OPC Monitor. This software you can also download from Process website and you can evaluate for free. Let's have a look. So we have Process OPC Monitor installed and when you open it, it will open up a window like this. So in this case, you will see it's, it has some panels where you have some blocks where you can visualize your value. But the first step is we have to connect this client with the server. So to do that, you can go to the source server and here you can add a new server. To add the new server, we need some server details. So once we open, first we open a process OPC way server and you go to your status and here you can find the address. Just copy this address and add a new server and paste the address and you can click on test. And based on your security mode, which is at the moment not defined in this OPC OS server, if I go to my expert mode and I have user, so I have anonymous checked. So I enable anonymous user to check. You can also put your username and password. You can also define your certificates. But at the moment for testing, I log in as anonymous. And I will go to test. Everything works fine. Click OK. Now your server is trying to connect. And you can see the status in a fraction of seconds. Now server is connected. Now you go to your signal group. And here you define your server. This is my server. And like we have seen in this simulation server we have in the object the simulation folder so we go to object and here you will find simulation and the counter and all the variables which was defined here also my test variable <laughs> so let's check out this counter you just drag and drop here and you have a counter you can have a random sinusoidal waveform and the test variable and these variables are in the group and then i can go to panel editor and i can click plus and I can select the variable, let's say counter, and I have several gauges here, which I can use for counter. So let's say we take a modern semicircle and click OK. So you have counter coming here, and this is reading the value from your simulation server. So here, if I show you the counter, this is the counter value, and this is the value on your OPC client. So this makes sense. You have a server which has some uh, variables there, and then you have a OPC client where you can visualize the variable. Maybe this step is both of you already know you have OPC client and you can have different clients which you can connect to this simulation server and you can monitor, monitorize the value. So this step, I hope most of you know if you have worked with OPC way server. Next step is very interesting. In the next example, we will see how to read the data from OPC way server, which is in a real hardware. For example, in this case, we have S7 1500 PLC which has an OPC OS server inside, you can read the data in Process OPC OS Monitor. And for that, I have already made a video in which I have explained how you can read the value from the OPC OS server in the PLC. And I have shown with the beautiful gauges and the real-time example to read the value from the real OPC OS server. This example I mention here because in case if you have no PLCs, so in this example, which you see right now, I have a PLC and I can read the values in my in my process OPC monitor, the real time values, which you can see here. But let's come to an example. If you don't have a PLC at the moment, you are in the testing phase. You are testing the PLC program. You're testing the OPC information model. How to get the value from PLC to OPC simulation server to test the OPC model of the PLC? This comes in the situation when you are working on a project and you're not in the real hardware project, you're not in the system, you're not in the factory, but you have your project in the project phase and you want to test the value. You want to see how your value of OPC way visualize on the dashboard or on the OPC way monitor. So in this case, the amazing feature of this simulation server is you can import the OPC way model of your PLC and put that in your OPC way simulation server and then you can visualize the data. Let's have an example. So at the moment, I'll show you an example in which I'm using a real PLC. So I'll go back to my example too. So let's say I have an environment and this environment, I have just boxes coming in and out. And let me show you my monitor. So I will open the project, which I have done. Let's not save it. So in this project, you can see I am visualizing the values. I'm visualizing the speed of my conveyor, and this is real time coming from the PLC. So if you see my PLC is here, and here, let me just show you, resize the window. 
These are the real values of my PLCs. I'm using a 7.15 rate. And these values I'm reading via OPC OA client, which is process OPC OA monitor, and I'm reading it here. All right. So in this scenario, I have a real PLC and reading the values. Now let's coming to a situation. I'll stop it at the moment. When you don't have a real PLC, but you still want to test how your dashboard looks like from the OPC UA values. In this case, what we can do is we go to our PLC and we go to the property of your controller. It's very easy in case of Siemens PLC because they have this amazing feature that you can import your OPC UA model here. So I go to the properties of my PLC and I go to my OPC UA. And if you go completely down, you will see export OPC UA XML file. Okay. So if you click on that, it will ask you where you want to export it. So let's say on the desktop and I click save. Now this file is exported. Let's see how, what is the content of this file. And I will just open it in a notepad here. That's the XML file, which was exported from TR portal. So it has all the OPC UA definition, the types and the tags, everything is defined here. You don't have to do anything. You just import, you just export it on your desktop. And now what we can do is we come to your, come to our software. This is my OPC UA simulation server. Here you go to the namespace. Now you have to understand that when you are importing this XML file in your process OPC UA simulation server, it has an OPC UA model. So this model is given in GitHub. So I have this OPC UA model defined in GitHub. So I have to import that file first, and then I have to import this XML file, which I have exported on my desktop. So every PLC has a specific way to define their OPC UA model. So in this case, what we have to do, we come back to simulation server and I will click on plus and I will import node set. So this node set you need to import. So this file, which I have, this is a predefined file of the node set for the Siemens PLC. I have to import that first. So I will click on open. And this file you can find in the GitHub account. For the links, I will put the link in the description where you can have a look. And the full step is you always have to do this in case if you are importing from Siemens PLC. So click on that. And then you will see you have an OPC foundation UADI already mentioned here. And the next step is you click on the plus again and import the node set. Now this is what I exported from my TR portal. Now I will import that in my simulation server and click. And then you will see here it has been imported from S7 OPC UA. Now you go to your object again. And here you will notice you have PLC defined here. And here, if you go to that global data and the data, here you'll find all the tags. So this is now imported into the simulation server. This is not a real time from the PLC. PLC, you can turn it off. You can disconnect the PLC OPS server. You just imported the file and you have all these variables coming in your simulation server. Now, interesting part is once it is here, now this data, these variables now are accessible via the OPC OS server, which is defined here. All right, this is now inside the server. So let's have a look. So in case of box count, you can uh, you can either inherit from the base data variable type or you can simulate that. Let's have a real time example. I will open my process OBC emanator. So we have this large large boxes here. And now in case of servers, I have to first add a server from here. So I will copy this one and I will add a server put it here, test address. I will do anonymous as well and click OK. So I have my simulation server added in my OPC UA client. You can use any client you want. This is my PLC. I don't need it anymore, so I can remove it so just to show you how you can use now the simulated values. So now you go to signal group again. So you can see S7500, 1500 has no values. You can select your server and actually I will add another group and here I will write process of PC UA simulation server. Sampling time by default, one second, click OK. Now I have this group 
And if you see, I go to my objects and PLC one data block data and from data, I have a large box count, small box count, total box count, and I had two sensors and I also had motor status and speed feedback out. So these were the tags I was using in the last project. So now I go to my panel editor, you will see these crosses because now obviously your client cannot communicate to the PLC. There's no PLC now, but let's uh, redefine the tags. So large box count, I will go here and connect this one and click OK. So now if you see here, it shows zero. It shows zero because if I go to my OPC US server and if I go to my object, it is inheriting the value from here. So value is by default zero, but I can simulate the value like I told you about the simulation function of the software. And here you can see now the value is being simulated. I can use as an increment or decrement to simulate the values. Similar thing I can do for the small boxes. Here I can just go to small box count, click OK, and I can select my small box count also as a counter, I would say in this case. Let's make a maximum value 300. And this is the simulating the value of the boxes. Straight away you can do for total box count, also 300. And you can do for the speed. So for the total box count, I can also put a counter and maximum 300. For the speed, feedback out, I can also use a random between 50, 54, 56, and let's say 40. So my speed is randomly changing between. So you can see that I have imported a XML file and I'm able to simulate this OPC Ray model in this OPC Ray simulation server. It will really help you to test your OPC Ray client or to test your dashboard or to do some analytics if you're doing that before going to the real factory. Similarly, motor state, I can also change. I can do a square. In this case, minimum value zero, maximum value one. and period of two seconds. And this should be my motor state run. So I can do that, say motor state run, and you can see this is my motor state, it's run and stop. Similarly, you can do up sensor and down sensor. So let me just quickly do that. And last but not the least, the motor speed as a curve. So I hope you like this lesson and we have seen how quickly we can import the OPC UI model from the real PLC into the software and then we can make some uh, changes via the simulated values just to monitor our information on our dashboard or in any OPC client that you're using. I hope it opens uh, a lot of gates to do your testing for the project in which your PLC or factory is not ready yet, but your program is there. You can do your some analytics or display the values on your, on your dashboard, however you like. So this was the last example, how easily you can import your XML files into the simulation server and you can connect to a process OPC monitor. If you want to have more information about the software, you can visit processopc.com where you can find these softwares, you can evaluate for free. And if you want to purchase, you can talk to the guys and their support is amazing. They're helping you all the way in all your projects. So go ahead and try the software. And if you have any doubt or in your project, you can just comment below this video and I will put the link of the software as well and the link of this GitHub file as well. And thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Have fun. Bye.